What's up, guys? Some volatility in the market, obviously, the last couple of weeks. want to go through some of the highlights of what to watch. And we're also going to talk through the best stocks to buy from community members. So in the community tab of YouTube, I asked a couple different posts, what stocks are you buying? I asked one today and then five days ago. I'm going to go through those and provide some commentary for myself as well as we talk through it. Now, looking at the market today, we're up slightly. Um, the NASDAQ, if you look at the QQQ, this is the NASDAQ composite, but the QQQ, the ETF, you know, that basically got to around 10% from the top. So we've talked about um, a little under, it was like 352 yesterday, and now it's back above 355. So it's retested that 354 area that we saw. And just to show you on a chart, we do chart day every single Wednesday, patron discord at nine o'clock AM Eastern. Just Wednesday, we talked about the possibilities here. You know, the 200 day moving average is closer to $329, $328. So we said 328 to 340 possible a couple of days ago. If it doesn't regain 355, ASAP. Well, we're at 356. So this could actually be a double bottom. You can see it pop up, but there's plenty of macro to keep an eye on. So let's talk through some of that. So the big thing is going to be treasury bonds and the 10 year treasury is at 4.647%. That's the highest we've seen in a long time. Fresh 15 year high this morning. Looking at the two year treasury at 5.11, the 30 year treasury at 4.77. Now for some people, this is attractive. We talk about capital appreciation or accumulation when you're young and then preservation, capital preservation, once you've got that money, you know, you only have to get rich once. And so if you've already made your money, you start looking at 5% and that's pretty attractive. You get a guaranteed 5% return. And if you've got millions of dollars, that might just be fine, especially with all the macro looming possibilities for recession and so on. Now, if you're watching this video, it means that you're still in that capital accumulation, capital appreciation phase. You're trying to grow your wealth. You want to get rich over time. And so you're probably not happy with four or 5% on a treasury bond. You know, treasury bonds are going to be used for passive income, retirement, things like that. Not necessarily if you're 25 years old, not saying if your risk profile says that's best for you, that there's anything wrong with that. But most people, if you're watching this, you're not happy with a four or 5% annual return. And the market's going to have peaks and valleys. It always does. But generally speaking, when you have market sell-offs, you know, basically a correction in the, in the NASDAQ 100, it's generally a time to accumulate shares. But of course, we know that stocks can always go lower. Now, the other thing to keep an eye on, this is important because we'll have a partial government shutdown over the weekend if this doesn't get resolved before then. Speaker McCarthy criticizes Senate measure, says House will get done to avoid shutdown. That could be why you see the market up slightly green. Plus, if you look at the RSIs, a lot of stocks, and even indexes are getting oversold. So this morning I said, share a stock ticker below a few bullet points of why you're buying now. All buys should be a five-year minimum long-term investment, making a video later today. You're watching it now, sharing your stock picks and comments. So this is best stocks to buy YouTube community picks. And there's two different posts here. I'll go through this one. And there's another post with a lot more comments from five days ago. So the first comment, Enphase, ASML, and Melly, if it comes down a little more, three of the best companies to own, in my opinion. Second comment, still buying India on a regular basis, profitability on the horizon, over 100% consecutive growth year over year, great balance sheet, business boosting acquisitions, and great management and board. Now that first comment, Enphase, ASML, Melly, those are high quality companies. I'm actually buying some Enphase and ASML myself in my primary taxable brokerage. I think with Enphase, you could see the stock have more pressure, especially as rates continue to go higher. And I won't be surprised if you see it closer to 100 or even under under $100, especially if we have an earnings miss or weaker guidance on this next earnings report. Now earnings season is going to be starting here again soon. In fact, companies are already starting to report over the next week or so, and we're going to be back in the ground of earnings season, and that's going to make the markets move one direction or the other. You know, macro is important, but at the end of the day, the fundamentals are going to be most critical. And if earnings come in positive and we're seeing positivity, now Workday came out this morning, kind of lowered some guidance, has that stock selling off hard. I was watching some CNBC earlier, which I haven't done in probably a year and a half. And Kramer is saying he thinks it's overreaction. So if he thinks it's an overreaction, it's probably going to go lower, I guess, inverse Kramer. Now, Indy, I do agree that this is a good spec stock. This is something you own five years minimum. But but it is specs. We talk about speculative stocks, 10X or zero. Talking about strong balance sheet, I'm not sure about the great balance sheet part of it. Def definitely has strong growth. This was a SPAC. All SPACs are spec for several quarters after that SPAC is completed. It does have great management. I agree in the acquisition. So I agree 
overall with Indy, especially if it's in the fives. You know, I said you know, in an earlier video, in the sixes, I thought it's a pound of the table. Of course, the macro has changed significantly since then. So now I won't be surprised if you see Indy in the fives. And I do think if you're accumulating the fives and sixes, you'll be happy, but you're going to have to be very patient, have a very long-term mindset. And it could take it could take a long time before that stock really gets into the Wall Street fashion, showing that sentiment's positive again. I'm expecting at some point, the market's going to start looking past some of this, but let's keep going on some of these stock picks and talk through them. Up next, you got High Tide. That's H-I-T-I. It's a Canadian retail cannabis stock, profitable, going on a 0.4x current sales, well positioned for US legalization if it happens, and undervalued under any metrics. Great CEO shooting for the stars. Looks like a good spec stock opportunity. We got some NVIDIA under $450. You got Procore. That's P-C-O-R, Bill.com, and Sneaky Super Spec Play, R-E-K-R. Lots of insider buying on it. Would love to hear your thoughts. I don't know that one. I'll take a look. Right now, I'm buying Realty Income and Devon Energy. We'll talk more about income stocks here later. We got Enphase and BN, Solar Edge, DCA, Crocs Loading, Zim Turnaround, Tesla, Costco, and Synopsis. So five days ago, I said, are you buying any stocks today? I added a little Enphase under $120. How about you? First comment, added Toast. You covered them about a year ago. It'd be cool if you revisit the company. I did cover this in detail. Covered restaurant, kind of SaaS companies. Did a broad spectrum deep dive. Check that video out. It is a little bit old at this point, but the information is still very relevant. Um, Toast, I do like. What's What you got to remember with Toast, that it doesn't have a high margin profile. So when you look at SaaS and recurring revenue, it's not all SaaS. So if you think of like CrowdStrike, it's primarily recurring revenue built in the cloud for the cloud, high margin profile. You know, a lot of times in these software companies, you get 80%, sometimes even higher on the margins. Toast is going to have a lower margin profile and it's not 100% SaaS. So it's more of a hybrid. It's going to have hardware and software. And so that carries a lower premium versus some of those true SaaS plays with recurring revenue is the primary revenue generator for the company. Next comment, added some Redfin under $7, grabbed some end phase last month around 120. Wish I had the cash to add some more, but my monthly budget is spent. Always have some cash. I recommend 5% on, you know, so you have cash to buy stocks when they're selling off like they are recently. You know, there's Redfin, there's Open Door, there's Zillow Group. Those are going to see continued volatility and pressure because of interest rates. If you look at housing, you know, if you look at the recent housing numbers, that's actually down 30 year mortgages at 7%. Of course, that's going to put pressure on housing type stocks and the housing market overall. So, you know, under $7, maybe that's a good buy longer term, but don't be surprised if you see more volatility on names like Redfin. End phase we already talked about. Sentinel One asked about having some material on Sentinel One. I've done lots of videos on Sentinel One comparing it to CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is best in breed endpoint security focused on larger enterprise. Sentinel One is going to be best, best in breed, you know, best in breed endpoint security really for SMB. But if you look at the overall magic quadrant from Gartner, you know, CrowdStrike and Microsoft are going to be up in that top right hand side. And CrowdStrike, really, in my opinion, is best in breed. Sentinel One is a leader, but it's more focused on SMB, small and mid sized businesses. So that's going to continue to see maybe a little bit more pressure than, you know, a name like CrowdStrike, because CrowdStrike is focused on those larger enterprises. And with cybersecurity, it's going to be business critical. So when you think of larger enterprises, I see less volatility in, say, a CrowdStrike than I do a Sentinel-1. Added Enphase and SoFi. Now, SoFi, I like that stock when it's basically one price to book or less. So that was an opportunity, $5 or less. I don't know if it's necessarily going to go down there. And I'd certainly rather see you buy SoFi at seven versus 11 or 12 where it was recently. But that's not a cheap stock. It was a SPAC. It's more speculative. I am bullish on SoFi. I think a lot of the bulls I see in social media, I think their expectations are a little bit out of whack for the current market conditions. So SoFi longer term, five years, I do like it. Just don't overpay for it. You know, I'd like to see it close Closer to five or six dollars if you're buying it and then hold it for five years, preferably even one under one price to book. And that's going to be somewhere in that five dollar range, which we haven't seen for some time. But it has come back significantly. It's in a better spot than, you know, like I said, 11 or 12 dollars. This comment, Alta Beauty, DG, so Dollar General, Solar Edge, and PayPal. Thanks for the information. I follow you from Mexico. I love Mexico. I was just um, on vacation there 
I think June or July of this year with my wife celebrating her wedding anniversary. But welcome, Mexico. You know, this is an interesting group of stocks. Uh, PayPal starting to get in that value stock range. Is it a value stock? Is it a, is it a value trap? I think most people would agree that longer term, if you're accumulating shares in these levels, it's probably going to do all right. Same with some other names like Square. You know, Solar Edge, that one really need to kind of take some of the air out of the balloon like Enphase has. And I think it's good to see that one come down a little bit. Dollar General. General, I'm not sure. For me personally, I'm not a big fan of that company, but it doesn't mean that you can't be. This person added upstart says, don't sleep on this one, guys. When the Fed cuts rates later next year, it'll be too late to buy now. Loans will always be needed and upstart is in the auto loan sector as well as personal loans, mortgage loans in the near future, and eventually business loans and HELOCs, huge runway for growth. One thing I'll say with that is I think interest rates will stay higher for longer. Um, maybe this is a good play. Maybe it's not. One thing I will say, say, I've got a pretty solid credit score. And in fact, when I did this, the credit score was nearly perfect. I think it was 850. And I applied for a loan last year and never heard back from Upstart. Maybe that's just an anomaly. I don't really know. But I actually went through the system, never got anything. The system said uh, there's an error. And I had to actually call them. They said they'd get back to me in a day or two. It's been 15 months and I still have not heard from Upstart. So take that for what you want. But as a you know user, the experience has not been positive for me personally, and maybe I'm just a one-off situation. VICI, so this is a real estate investment trust or a REIT. My thoughts, it's a great income stock. If you're looking for income like a bond and you're in retirement and you want passive income, that's a great way to, you know, to, to get that passive income in, in retirement or early retirement with something like a real estate investment trust. VICI pays about a 5.5% dividend yield, but you're buying an income stock primarily for the income, for the yield, for the dividend. You're not gonna get a lot of capital appreciation on something like an income stock. So if you're young and you're trying to accumulate wealth, generally speaking, you're kind of going against the trend. Now your risk profile, your suitability might say that VICI is a great fit. Maybe you are very risk adverse. But if you are younger and you're looking to accumulate wealth, it may not be the best stock for you. I'm not saying I don't know your situation. It may be a great stock for you, but I think a lot of people get this wrong. I did the same thing. I made the same mistake when I was in my 20s. I started investing guys at the end of the dot com, basically in the dot com bubble. First stock I ever bought, you know, penny stock biotech, went all in, didn't dollar, dollar cost average, didn't do my homework, didn't know what I was doing. I was in college, you know, 20 years old, and that didn't work out very well. And so then I got scared. And then I started buying value stocks and dividend paying stocks. It took me a few years to realize, well, that's not going to get me where, where I want to go. You know, you either have a lot of time, a lot of capital or nice returns. And it's very difficult to accumulate wealth over a 10 or 20 year period if you're just getting a dividend. You know, it does help with the dividend being reinvested in compounding. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that strategy, but a lot of young people, I think they get scared from something like the, the pandemic. We had this year or two where the market's been very volatile and you're, you get scared and you start flooding to more value names, dividend stocks. I see it all the time on social media, 25 year olds, you know, going all in on dividend stocks, dividend growth investing, you know, DGI dividend growth investing, they're primarily focused on the growth of the dividend not necessarily the share price. So if you're buying dividend stocks, I recommend if you're younger to buy DGIF, Dividend Growth Investing for Fired, and that's focused on total growth. So growth of the stock price and growth of the dividend. So here's another person looking more for, for dividends and income, realty income, so that's O, ticker O, that's gonna be another REIT. And then SCHD, these are, you know, if we look at my end game plan, my end game early retirement plan, SCHD is a big component of that, but it's not something I'd necessarily recommend if you're 20 or 30 years old. But with that said, if your risk profile is low, if you don't want to take a lot of risks, that's a great ETF to invest in. It also gives you some nice diversification because it doesn't have a lot of the technology in it. And I've got a deeper dive on SCHD on the channel. If you're interested, go check that out. This person bought Roku and Square. I actually added some Square myself under 45. I'm personally not a big bull on Roku, but I do understand the bull thesis and I hope the best for the company, hope it does well. This person added Enphase, AMD and GEHC. Now AMD, I do like that stock, but even at $100, it's kind of expensive, honestly, if you really look at the metrics of it. So, you know, I, 
I liked it better at 90, you know, it was $95 recently, but even better than that, I liked it when it was 55, 65 and 75. So longer term, I think, you know, AMD is going to be a great one to hold. Just be careful paying too much. I want to see another earnings report, see how that one does, but don't get me wrong. I'm a bull on AMD. We were buying it heavily in discord, you know, $58, $65, even $75, not so much at 95 and a hundred dollars. Picked up a hundred SoFi under $8. Talked about that one earlier. Palantir low 12. You know, this is going to be constant controversial as well. But Palantir, if you look at SaaS metrics, you compare other SaaS companies within that bucket. It's not necessarily a cheap stock at $14, but I do like the company long-term. We were the first YouTube channel to cover Palantir six months before the direct listing, before it went public. That's one where $9, you know, way back when under $9, it was the target. And then recently here, we were buying it, you know, six and seven, I think on Palantir. This person bought Target six shares. You know, that's kind of a DGI type of play. They, they're having some problems right now when you think of organized retail crime shoplifting. Now that's not just one person going in and stealing one thing. This is organized crime where there's a group of people. There's a syndicate that goes in. A lot of times they go after even shipments or there's somebody on the inside that's actually helping people steal inventory from the back room and so on. So Target's closed recently here, a few different stores. I think you'll continue to see more of that. Uh, I do like the company. It's, it's got some political drama behind it as well. So that could continue to see some volatility and the sentiment might not be there for some time. Enphase and SoFi, SoFi and Enphase, you're seeing a trend there. Yeah, 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 nah, I couldn't afford to do it. Okay, great. <laughs> Added 10 shares of SoFi, NU and Palantir. Target, PayPal and Disney. CSP options on Enphase today. Added Enphase, seems like it's bottoming. Did you add some Paycom? I have added some Paycom. I think the most recent buy was closer to 255. Um, that's seeing more pressure. You think of SMB, you think of like even Workday this morning. I, I think you could see that stock even drift lower. Now, of course, previous videos, we liked it maybe $20 even higher than it is now, but we always DCA. So we're dollar cost averaging. So I have like one third of a, of a position of Paycom, something like 0.3%. I want to have like 1% of my portfolio in Paycom. And I've got about a third of that. And that's the same with Enphase and ASML and a couple other stocks that I'm focused on right now. NVTA, Palantir, Skywater Technology, that thing has been beat down. And of course, small cap type stock, burning cash, no free cash flow possibility where it has to dilute shareholders. Those kind of stocks, they're, they're high risk reward. They're spec stocks. You know, Skywater is another one that I consider spec. And that's one I have been buying. I am down on Skywater, own it in both portfolios, continuing to nibble it as it goes a little bit lower. So, you know, I'll admit with Skywater, I bought that stock probably higher than I wanted to at first. And it's really fallen off a cliff. And sometimes that happens. You know, I'm not right every single time. I think longer term that I will be right. But in the, you know, the short to midterm, I could have waited to buy some of those shares. And I admit that Tesla, Palantir, AMD, Melly, Nike, DE. So John Deere, Tractor Supply Company, Microsoft. That's probably the winning comment. I like that mix of stocks there. Uh, you know, Tesla, Pal Palantir, AMD. These are high quality companies. The last ones are the last four or more DJF. So Microsoft, Tractor Supply Company, John Deere, Nike. In fact, I own every one of those stocks in my portfolio and I'm bullish on those long term. So nice group of stocks there. Eight stocks that you could consider. Now with all these stock picks, I'm not saying you should just run out and buy them. You have to assess what your risk tolerance is, what your blueprint is, what your suitability is. And you have to go do some more homework on the stocks and then decide where you want to buy them, what price you want to pay based on not only the fundamentals, but the technical analysis and so on. Now I've been buying some stocks in both portfolios. I've got a primary taxable brokerage, $1.5 million. It's actually a little under that now with the recent sell-off. And then we've got the fired up wealth community portfolio. Now, I will share one recent stock that we added in the community portfolio that is a new purchase. So a starter position, Texas Roadhouse, ticker is TXRH. And I've been buying several other stocks in both of those portfolios. Of course, if you want to see my buys in real time, head over to patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth, join a leader higher and you can get into discord and see all my buys as I make my buys. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notifications, drop me a like, drop me a comment, have a great rest of your day. Take care.